YouTube. Welcome to my shop. I'm Mike Hedden. This is Round 2 Woodworks and I appreciate you stopping by. Well, if you've seen my last few videos, I've been working on this little table here, this little side table. Uh, I did some tapered legs, put the uh, Babinga aprons on, and last time I did the drawer. Well, last thing uh, for this little uh, project is the top. Now, the top might be a little more difficult than I thought. When I started this little project, I wanted to do it all with what I had. Now, a, a little bit I've wasted be, for my stupidity. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I've got some babinga left, but I don't have enough to do a tabletop. And I've got some, uh, some maple left. I don't have enough to do it. So, <laughs> maybe I'll try to piece it together, see if I can make something look halfway decent. But uh, before I can start figuring it out, putting the puzzle together, I'm going to have to cut it to three-quarter inch. It's, uh, it, it's in a two-by-two, two, I think. So I will uh, rip these down to three-quarter inch. And then, uh, you know, about seven months ago, I bought a shop full of tools. And one of the tools was uh, a DeWalt planer that I've never even plugged in. So I thought, well, maybe for a tabletop, it'd be a good, good time to see what this DeWalt planer will do. So I'm planning on using that. And uh, other than that, I'm not real sure. <laughs> Without a plan, who knows? So let, let's get on to it. Let's start cutting the, uh, the milling up the, the stock, rough stock, and seeing uh, what we can do to make it work if we can. This is one of my Freud blades. Normally I don't sharpen Freud blades, but this is just a 90 degree. And uh, you know, the, the teeth here aren't close to up there, so you know, I can save a few bucks by just doing this myself and uh, it, it works fine. Now, if you've got angles and stuff, I wouldn't screw with this. I would just send it out. But since this is just a 90 degree, flat uh, it, it's pretty easy to sharpen and, and this little harbor freight works for this kind of sharpening the other I don't know about
long. As stated before, about seven, eight months ago, I bought a shop full of tools, and one of those tools happened to be this DeWalt three knife uh, planer. I think it's a 737, I, I think. I'm not, I, I'm not quite sure, but it's the, it's the big DeWalt. It's two speed, and uh, I've never used it. Never even plugged it in. So I thought now would be a good time to, to use it. So last night, I gave it the test. And uh, one nice thing about it, when I bought this thing, it came on this uh, chest, this rolling chest, so I can roll this thing anywhere I want. And uh, when I bought this chest, uh, he called it a European toolbox. Well, it's a Geist, a Gerst, Gerstner. And uh, when I did some research on it, uh, these Gerstners have been made in Ohio since <laughs> like 1930. So uh, this definitely is not a European toolbox. It's as American as the Stars and Stripes. So uh, I really like it. If you're in, into, uh, you want a good wooden toolbox, I would suggest looking into Geissner because uh, it's a nice box. So anyway, getting back to this uh, this uh, planer, I, I since I never used it, I got the direction book out and went through it, and I, uh, I I went on YouTube and watched a few videos, and this thing's got some nice uh, features. Uh, this wheel is what raises and lowers the bed, and each uh, one full turn is like a sixteenth of an inch. A half a turn is 32nd of an inch, etc. So um, that that really works nice because you can just change it like a 32nd of an inch and put it through, flip it over, and keep doing it. So that's a nice feature. It's got two speeds, a finishing and a cutting. And on this, uh, I, I just used the, the cutting, the, the fast speed. And then there's also this little knob here and that keeps it going uh, going lower than you want. The stock that I wanted, I, I wanted it uh, three quarters. So I put that on three quarters and I just started going down and, and pretty soon it hit to where it wouldn't go down anymore. So uh, that worked out really nice too. And as I say, um, I gave it the chan uh, a try the first time last night and uh, I gotta say, I was very impressed with this tool. Because most of the time, when I resaw wood, I've gotta get my jack plane out, start doing it, you know, make sure that there's one flat side. And then, when I get the flat side, I use this, and I'll go up three quarters of an inch and make a line. And then, uh, then I will just take my plane and I will plane it down to the line, smooth it out. And, uh, you know, I love to do that. And that's what I've been doing since I was in seventh grade woodshop. I've never had any power tools for this. Uh, this takes an hour at least to do all these boards. This takes like less than 10 minutes to do all these boards. And, it does it in pretty good good uh, shape too. Now, there was one problem. I, I read that uh, there's things called snipe, which is a little grooves in the end as it comes off the, the plate, it digs in. And uh, this, uh, this showed some snipe. And uh, one thing that they said is if you, when you put it in, lift it up a little bit, when you take it out, lift it up a little bit, that'll help prevent snipe. And that works. Another way to prevent it is when you put it in, as it goes in, put another board right behind it. And, and that'll prevent snipe. And that also works. So uh, let me show you a little bit on how this, uh, this planer worked. And we'll show the milled up stock. And uh, we'll go from there. <laughs>
Everything should be cut down to three quarters of an inch exactly. I like this planer. Okay. So now that we got all the stock milled up, now we've got to uh, to glue the tabletops. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use biscuits, but we still have to joint these sides. So let me show you how I plan on jointing these sides. Okay, the tabletop is going to be like this. Okay, these are going to be 45 doubt, and these right here will be 45 doubt, and it will it will uh, encase it so there's there uh, won't be any end grain. You know, I, I don't want the end grain showing so. Um, I'm going to miter the edges and case this but before we do that we've got to joint these things and the way I'm going to join it is I'm going to mark every one and then like these two will come up and I'll get my six or seven and join it and then this one will come up together and I'll, I'll joint those then this one will come up and I will joint those and on and on and on so we'll have a nice uh, tight fit. I will use biscuits uh, just uh, for a little more support, but I think that'll work out pretty good. I'm not sure how the tabletop will look with all this hodgepodge, but we'll soon find out. So let's get on to joining these things up. Alrighty, right now we're joining the edges to make sure that uh, it's a nice crisp a nice crisp uh, fit between the two boards. That'll do that one. Beautiful. That's the way it should work. Well, it's time for a little glue. I've got uh, the clamps on it uh, ready, you know, as, as a trial run. So now I'll just some, dab some glue on it, buckle it up real tight, and let it dry and see where we go.
Alrighty. What we're going to do now is uh, we're we're just getting the uh, rails to join to the tabletop. did the rails around here so now we're going to do the tabletop around here I don't have the bag on this dust control bag because right now my garage is filthy dirty so as soon as I get done with this the shop has got a thorough cleaning coming out of it. That is it. Now for glue up. Well it's time for glue so I'm going to have to hurry with this because uh, it is warm today. I've got the longer setting glue too, so. We'll see. Okay, YouTube, I guess this is the uh, pretty much finished project for this little side table. We tapered the legs, we put the aprons on, we did the drawer, and the last thing is the tabletop. Now, uh, this tabletop, as I said, I. I when I started this project, I wanted to do everything with what I had. Actually, I didn't have quite enough, so I had to uh, Charlie Brown this top, as I said. Now, uh, I hope old Charlie doesn't send it over to Mickey Mouse, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm not too displeased with how it came out. 
but I guess I'm kind of like everybody out there, like you are, is that uh, I did it this time, and next time I hope to do better. So anyway, YouTube, I'll, I, I'm going to uh, do the, the finish now. I'm going to put a couple of coats of tongue oil on it, let it dry real good, and then I'm going to put some coats of lacquer. I don't know how, it, the lacquer depends on how it looks before I quit. So tongue oil and lacquer, and then I will give you a, a, a quick uh, picture of what it turned out in the end. So I'll, uh, I'll get busy on that, and I'll put a picture on, and, and until next time, Thank you very much for stopping by, and I will see you then.